evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Jewish uh, Reward. No, one second. Good evening, welcome to the Zoning and Planning Board meeting. Uh, I'd like to ask everyone to stand and play the flag. And afterwards, I'd like you to also uh, serve a moment of silence for our veterans who want to celebrate this weekend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public notice of this meeting, pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, has been given by the Secretary in the following manner, posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office, emailed to the retrospect and the courier post. Do we have a roll call, please? Chairwoman, Yes. Excused. Ms. Gushin? Here. Mr. Pachowski? Here. Mr. Alderman? Here. Uh, uh, Deputy Chief Whoever Text and we'll be Okay. Eric Paz? Here. Mr. Neer? Here. Mr. Stone? Here. Mr. White? Mr. White's excused. He's ill. Uh, Mr. Carlemier? Carlemier? Okay, Rowan. Okay. Motion is in order for the approval of the minutes of the October 11th meeting as submitted by the secretary. Each member has received a copy. Do we have any questions or concerns with the minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Discussion? Second. Second by Mr. Pachowski. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things quickly under under old business. Um, we have uh, a letter here been received from Mr. Michael Root. Um, he is basically uh, requesting permission to sell Christmas trees on his lot at 812 Black Horse Pike. Um, Mr. Chappelle is going to be subleasing that property. Um, if, does anyone have a problem with that? Any questions with that? Basically the same thing we do um, for the gentleman over at Anthony's Water Ice. They submit a letter and if there's any problems we bring them up and if not, we let Mr. Knight issue a permit for that. It's just an approval from the planning board. Right? Yes. Is that what we've done in advance? Yes. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Christmas tree lot for the uh, Christmas season. Sure. Second. All right, second. Mr. Ranieri, I don't believe we need roll call. Mr. Ranieri. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so uh, Mr. Chevelle can get his permit to do that. You basically approved. Okay. So what do I do now? That's it. Get some trees. Get some trees. Get some trees. Get some Put the music up. Procedurally, we can just handle that because it's not really a. You just submit for a temporary sign permit for the activity. Okay. <laughs> well, do you want to call Dan and see how he's doing? He texted me like on Monday. He is getting better. Yeah, I, I didn't speak to him since Monday was out of town. Okay. And the second um, item we wanted to bring up is we've, we've had some uh, correspondence with the uh, sign producers for Caliber Collision. As you well know, they have received uh, site plan approval um, for the old State Farm building on the Black Horse Pike. And we just want to read a couple things into the minutes. We're trying to make life easy on everybody, not make them come in and uh, get new variances for everything. But we just want to go on the record this evening um, to be sure that uh, when the gentleman's name is Brandon, 
that Brandon is able to uh, contact uh, our engineer, Mr. Pettit, and our solicitor, Mr. Carl Meir, and be sure everything is in order, uh, not to require a variance so Mr. Mike can issue the, uh, the proper sign permits. I mean, I received the information uh, without where this was on uh, record, but as we talked earlier, from what I understand, the applicant now is removing all the variances, having spoken or communicated uh, with your engineer, uh, had reviewed the documents that have been submitted in. If the applicant is withdrawing uh, his request uh, for the variances that apparently at first were required, and then the use variance that was necessary for this type of uh, sign structure, all of those things have been removed and he's in compliance with your ordinance for signs, which I believe he is, if he's meeting those requirements, uh, then uh, it's not necessary to come in. If it does require a modification of a previous approval, uh, a parking spot or whatever, but that might have to be adjusted, so long as it doesn't trigger any variance of any kind, you can do that administratively. John, come for me. I think if we want, we was going, we was going from 81 feet to 80 feet. Yes, we, we reviewed the initial application and identified a couple of variances, the location of the sign, the size of the sign. He responded that he would modify the size and then eliminate the parking space to comply with the setbacks. We checked the approved plan and <coughs> the parking space is provided versus what's required, and the loss of one space would not trigger a variance. So in, in our view, you know, he's gonna, he says he's going to comply with the sign ordinance as long as he does. We don't believe the loss of the parking space is, is detrimental. I agree. Okay, so I just want to put that on the record, and uh, I'm, I'm sure Brandon will be in touch with you very <laughs> So there's no action by the board, it's just a... Well, I would, I, would, I would suggest I haven't seen the original plan, but if he has submitted a plan, he has to give you something documenting that he's withdrawn all of his requests for variances. He's received the engineer's report and, and it is in agreement uh, that the once air parking spot can be removed, that can trigger a variance for parking, doesn't create any other issues, and he'll comply. So if he has a site plan that he's submitted, he should at least resubmit that to the engineer to make sure he's meeting all the You'll requirements. review that and yes. if there's any, you'll review that if there's any problems. You'll just tell him he has to come back in December. Yes. And he has to get everything to us within 14 days prior to the next meeting for us to review before he can come back in. Yes. Okay. We'll communicate uh, with the engineer, and uh, at least there should be some, perhaps, administrative uh, amendment by resolution that shows he's in compliance. Is okay. everyone satisfied with that? Do have any questions on that? Okay. We're just trying to kind of be business friendly and not put the guy through the ringer. The one foot was de minimis, and I think we're just trying to shuffle the pieces a little bit to make it work. So okay. I would recommend the board at least bring that to a vote. Uh, what the understanding is if he satisfies the engineer, uh, there are not any variances necessary. You want to do it by resolution? Do, do it, uh, approve it as an administrative amendment to eliminate one part of the stock. Okay. And then I always will work uh, with the engineer and get that copy. All right, do you, do you want to put something out to the board? Yeah, it should, it should be a, a resolution approving an administrative amendment. Uh, it should memorialize that the applicant uh, has uh, withdrawn all his requests for all variance, uh, is in compliance with the uh, uh, railroad ordinances for signs. Uh, there will be elimination of one parking spot. Uh, that does not create any necessity for uh, variance. It still meets the uh, minimum requirement for parking for the site. Uh, and as long as he's in compliance with the engineer for review, which he submits, uh, the board will approve uh, that administrative amendment, which will include that sign. Mm -hmm. You should pass that resolution now. We'll draft it up after speaking with the engineer. Are there any questions on this resolution? All right. Is there a motion on the board to approve the resolution as read by Mr. Carlin here? I make a motion. Mr. Robertly? Second. Mr. Stone, roll call, please. Please. Uh, Gerald Yes. Yes. Mr. Chaskin? Yes. Mr. Rockerly? Yes. From Mayor Hodges? Yes. Mr. Ranieri? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your diligence in following up with them. Just keep me in the loop and uh, we'll hopefully get this resolved. We're going to jump around a little bit. Um, I apologize if you have an agenda in front of you, um, but we're going to jump around a little bit here. 
Uh, we have a bulk variance for 126 Pine Avenue. Uh, Mr. Albano, if you would like to address the board. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. I'm going to call my client out, too. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mayor, um, Chairwoman. Um, I, my name is Michael Albano. I'm an attorney in Runway, New Jersey. You know who I am. Um, I'm here tonight on a bulk variance for I and H Building Builders LLC. Uh, Vin Shani is a member of uh, the LLC, and Steve DeVitro is also here, the other member. Um, there's a lot on Pine Avenue, it's 126 Pine Avenue, where my client's under agreement to sale to purchase that lot. It's a block 140, lot 3.01, it's in the R3 zone. Uh, the lot is 50 by 125. We've uh, provided a tax map. It was uh, cut off from the McIntyre property. Um, the, my client, uh, the lot was created. My client earned the agreement. He did ask uh, the McIntyres for um, additional uh, land because uh, the McIntyre's lot is a little bigger than my client, clients if he, if he is approved. Um, they said no, they wouldn't give him any more, um, any more uh, space. Well, they have a nice lot. It's 100 by 125. The end lots are a little bigger. But if you look at the tax map that we provided, there's very similar lots in that area. The, the ordinance says we have to have, the, my client has to have 60 feet, but most of the lots there are 50 feet. Um, I outlined at least 20 lots in the area that are the same as the lot and bond. Our position is that the bulk variance uh, is de minimis. Um, because of the, the nature of the uh, of the uh, area that all the other lots were 50 feet. Um, John, uh, what I said, uh, do you have anything well, else? Let's, let's swear in. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Raise your right hand. John, if you're going to give any customary comments, let's swear in. Uh, state your name for the record. Vincent Yanni. John Pettit. Uh, if you swear me, swear the testimony you're about to give before this board be the whole truth, so I'll you I do. The record should reflect that the application is properly before the board having that jurisdictional requirement. I also want to let the record reflect, I, I apologize, uh, Mr. Opperly uh, stepped down because he is a client of uh, Mr. Albano, so he wasn't being rude, he just has a conflict, that's why he stepped down. That's our application, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we did advertise in the paper and, and uh, gave it to uh, the, the planning board secretary, I guess just the public portion would be yeah, we reviewed it. Mr. Mr. Pettit uh, saw no point in doing a review letter, honestly. Um, I just, in reviewing it myself, I see uh, most of the, the lots are in concert with what you are asking to do. Um, I don't think it's anything uh, out of the realm of reality. Before we open up to the public, does anyone on the board have any questions for the applicant or the engineer? I just have one question. Is the intent to build a house? Yes. Yes. But I, I have two comments. I, I believe the lot is located in the R1 zone. It's okay. the, the same front of the same It should be R60 feet. R1. Um, and then the second question I have is mm -hmm. there is a bituminous driveway. Okay, we would. What is that access? No. Alligator clap. Let the record reflect that Mr. Dan White, even though he is not feeling well, has arrived at the least. sit down there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I can't give it to the Right now, that by doing this driveway goes to the McIntyre property. That's going to be removed once he buys the lot. Okay. And your client can testify he's able to comply with all zoning requirements for setback and when he builds the house, being all the other requirements. <clears throat> yes. And you're unable to acquire any ground. Lot four is 50, 50 feet. Lot three is the 100 foot lot, which the McIntyre is the one that is property. Any questions from the board, for the professionals, or for the client? Okay. All right, well, do we have a resolution? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter only, uh, please come up to the microphone and state your name and address, please. Joan Klaus. Hi, Joan. 131 Oak Avenue. That property touches the back of my property. 
are about these meet. So I have a few questions that I'd like to ask concerning the building there. Sure. I wanted to know if it's going to be a rancher or a two-story. Okay. Also, we'll let the, we'll let the yeah, attorney come up to that. Okay. We'll answer that question for you. With the plan to fill a two-story home. Two-story. I'd like to know. Pardon me? How many bedrooms? Either three or four bedrooms. How many oh, bedrooms? Two and a half beds. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know how far from the back of the property line will that house be? In other words, my, my lot is also 125 foot deep. And like I said, it, I used to own that lot at one time. I have a gazebo there. So we're there winter and summer outside. I'd like to know how far back is that house going to come? Well, there's minimum setbacks that, that there are minimum setbacks that are required that he has to meet. Do you have a site plan as of yet as to where you're going to build? No, but we'll submit that at the, at the grading plan. But the minimum we'll setback we'll is. We'll comply with all the setbacks. What's the minimum setback? 25? 25. 25. It's only 20, it's 25 feet, but it is a deeper lot. So, so I can expect it will be 25 feet. Minimum, at least. Yeah. At least. But because the lot's so deep, more than likely, it has to be closer to the yeah, most likely we would push the house closer to the street so that the future homeowner has a, has a bigger backyard. That would be the intention. So you're going to take that driveway out? Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, also, I'd like to know if you're going to put up a fence. Typically, we wouldn't put up the fence. We would just put up the house and put it up for sale. A lot of times, the future homeowner would put up the fence, but we would not. So if they go to put up the fence, do they have to go for a permit? Yes. yes. I mean, does that have to be approved? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you have two front yards, how it has to be constructed. So there are strict, um, you know, rules about fence permits. So whoever puts up the fence would have to comply with all of those rules yeah. for us to keep with the issue. What's your concern? My concern is uh, my gazebo is not far from our property line. And if they put up a six foot fence, I'll get no air there at all. A five foot fence is fine. Five foot to me is fine, but I noticed that other houses that were built in our area, they put up six foot fences, and I was hoping that I don't care if they put a fence up, just as long as it's not six foot, so we can get a little bit of air back here for the gazebo. Yeah, we really can't um, tell can't somebody what this time. we can't really tell them what they can or can't do as long as they fall within the 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 ordinance that we have. Um, Keith, Mr. Knight cannot issue a permit um, if they don't <coughs> fall within the ordinance without them coming in for a variance. So if they wanted to put up an eight foot fence, of course not going to do that. They would have to come before us and show us a site plan, then you would be notified and you know yeah. but, so it's pretty much whatever the standard is, they have to fall in the standard or come back for a variance. So they're allowed a six foot fence though. Pardon me? They are allowed a six foot fence. And we yeah. can't they, they they can't do that. So I become friendly with you. Yeah. <laughs> So much for the dust, there may still be some dust that's more for yeah. actual erosion to control the road. Yeah, like I expect there's going to be dust, you know, <laughs> but uh, I have plastic all around it right now like with, for the winter. But uh, what about the tree if you plan on taking those trees down? I believe we're going to have to take the two big trees down because they're right around the foot right where the house is. You can take it down one tree or two? I believe we're going to have to take them both. Okay. We're going to everything we can to keep them there for the tree. But yeah, well, I don't, I'm not really concerned about it. My concern is that you did a good tree guy and it doesn't fall down on my gazebo. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be bonded and insured. We, we, we assure you. We have enjoyed our gazebo so much and of course that's my concern. I don't care about the house being built there as long as it's not in my back door. You know, but uh, and if that's, you know, well, whatever. I just don't want everything on top of me. And I'm glad that, that uh, you bought the property and uh, we'll put up a nice house. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joan. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak on this particular application? 
of seeing no one else wishing to speak on this application, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. I make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Mr. Pachowski, seconded by Mr. Ranieri, all in favor? Aye. Okay. The public portion is closed. Mr. Carlin here. So the applicant before the board for uh, seeking approval to build a single family home on the undersized lot uh, as a pre existing undersized lot that doesn't conform with the ordinance as it has been changed and set today. Uh, the applicant had the burden to establish to the board that, uh, through his testimony that it was a pre existing condition uh, and that he's unable to bring the lot size into compliance by acquiring a joint ground next to it as a pre-existing lot and does not have the ability to acquire uh, it's it's appropriate under the land use law in jersey uh, for the board to uh, grant them. okay is there a motion on the floor to grant the resolution as read i make a motion but mayor capatis there a second 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 by mr stone first we have roll call please Chairwoman yes Good luck with it. Yeah, we're going to uh, now hear uh, the application for the use variance. Um, and again, uh, Mr. Rockley will have to stand down. Additionally, uh, Mayor Capaz and uh, Mr. Rainier will have to uh, stand down because they are the first. Uh, if this gets turned down, it goes to the mayor and council. We'll do it. Well, you might, might be out pretty quick. Good. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go back to you guys. Madam Chair, members of uh, the Planning Board, my name is Michael Albano. I'm here on uh, Mr. Garofolo's request for use variance. Um, I know you're short members tonight. I think you only have five, and five is the magic number. So if we go forward and get four yes votes, no, still a, a no, if it gets uh, denied. Um, I was thinking maybe we should carry this in the December meeting, sure. so we might have a full board. I know Dennis Rinell is here, he was here last time, and yes. somebody else was in here, I can't remember who it was, who was here. Um, and we'd rather have the full board for it because of the vote. And of course. <clears throat> so, um, well, that, if there's anyone, is there anyone here yeah. um, regarding this application? Because they will not be re-noticed. We, we didn't re-notify oh, this okay. meeting. Just okay. the newspaper you made us do not. Yeah, public. yeah. There was no public last time when we came to September. Right, there's been public this And we re-notified in the newspaper for tonight. So I, I'd ask not to re-notify because it's been twice in the only That's fair. I think it's fair. Yeah, it's appropriate for the uh, advocate in seeking a use variance to request a postponement when he only has five members. Uh, you know, it's pretty common that that request is made. And usually the request is uh, to uh, allow the advocate a new, new date without having to re-advertise. Yep. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that all my Okay. You're gonna have any Christmas parties around that time, right? <laughs> Actually, I mean honest to goodness, this, this is the first time we haven't had like a full forum. I mean full full forum and I've been, been doing it for fourteen years and we just have people Mr. Tickets who called me at five o'clock he was sick and just, I apologize for you guys having to come out here, but uh, I know you definitely want to have at least seven up here. Yep. Give yourself the best opportunity. Thanks. All right, we'll see you next month. Thank you, Mr. R. Carl Evans.
you have it. Is that right? Uh, Kramer. It's pretty good. I just, just right. You don't have to stay the whole time unless you have another dinner. Yeah. You can watch us. That's it. Trees on the yeah, right? Oh, that's it. Yes, and and everything that is in here that I think it's uh, yeah. so the much better actually. How about you? Yeah. No, no. 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 Thank you. All right, just for everyone. For everyone's application, uh, Mr. Garofalo uh, decided to continue his application until the December meeting when we hopefully will have a full quorum. Um, we did have enough of a quorum for the application, but he would have been required to have five yeses out of five, so he decided to uh, continue until next month. So we will be hearing that next month. Thank you. Sorry. Appreciate you. Good evening, Mr. Bach. Good evening, Candace. This will not be a long process. We're actually making tremendous leeway in both the master plan and the redevelopment process. So this is another hand on staff. So I'm not going to be here all night. So we need something quick. Um, we have a provided another update of our draft where we incorporated uh, a lot of the comments from the last meeting and also we had some additional feedback as, as we requested at our last meeting in terms of some additional items that were incorporated into our recommendations for the master plan. Okay, this is going to list those uh, so you know what we're looking at. It's talking about uh, rezoning a few of the uh, uh, areas of the town taking a look at some other additional recommendations for our bulk standards for a few of the zones. One, of, one specifically is the, the R3, which we spoke about at length. Uh, also some temporary signage, but Candace is going to go through that. Uh, take whatever feedback. If there's no dramatic changes, we're going to issue our final report in two weeks through, through the clerk. We'll afford it to everybody and we'll uh, advertise for a hearing in December to adopt the master plan. I just want to point out in the appendices, the appendices are just illustrative of things that can be done in terms of ordinances. So by approving the master plan, you're not specifically approving those appendices. They're just illustrative of the type of bulk standards and everything else the governing body could be considering. So really, the master plan is to report the appendices are illustrative of things that you can do with those bulk standards, temporary signs, and things like that. So some of those things will be uh, fleshed out a little bit more in the two week book that's coming. But this gives myself and council the ability to adopt ordinances that will yes. take absolutely. recommendations from the Oh, system. absolutely, yes. So it, it's really trying to uh, foreshadow the process. So instead of just saying you should look at additional bulk standards, this is the type of bulk standards you're going to look at. It may change slightly when it goes to every body. You know, and that's flashed out, uh, but uh, won't change that much. So, yeah, just wanted to just run down what, what we got going on. Yeah, I'm just going to go in order of uh, the pages that they're written on, so not necessarily in order of importance. But um, on page 28, we added the to the circulation goal. We just added one goal to be inclusive of the recently uh, resolution that was adopted uh, that complete streets. Resolution, so we, just, we added a goal um, to incorporate complete streets into the master plan process and also uh, put the resolution into Appendix E so that it's going to be there um, on paper and it can be referenced um, when anything happens with regard, regarding the master plan. Uh, page 29, we edited number four to incorporate. Uh, the current re redevelopment study along the Black Horse Pipe. It alluded to um, an overlay district and that kind of stuff, so we just tried to make it more apparent and that you're actually in the process of investigating on that area for the redevelopment. Uh, page number 32, 
I just you were also helping, is this also talking about a highway commercial distinguishing yeah. between two different <laughs> It leaves the option for that, um, and that would be something that would be handled in the redevelopment plan right. um, if the area is estimated in the redevelopment. Yeah, I'm going to call a graph that we believe that the whole area that we uh, was referred to us by government bodies to study area, all those properties will meet that criteria. So uh, when you do your redevelopment plan, then you can do the overlay and have some of those characteristics that you were looking for to enhance that, that black or spike corridor or highway commercial, quote unquote, district. Um, page 32, number 11, uh, had recommended including in the SED district assisted living facilities and continuing care facilities. So we just added in that uh, definitions and definitions and an ordinance amending the SED district will be provided. And again, that will be in the appendix in the form of a draft ordinance that can be <coughs> edited or adopted as is to make it easier. Um, Do you see senior housing being anywhere else? Do you think that it would it ever be conducive of along the Black Horse Pipe or anything like that? Um, potentially. And what do you think about that? Along in certain areas of the Black Horse Pipe, but again, you're, you're Master plan goals and objectives for the Black Horse Pike <coughs> throw a commercial corridor. You know, so if that ever comes as a possibility, then we'll take a user. And it would just meet their user standards. But really the, the, the corridor goals and objectives was um, mm -hmm. all the way along is try to enhance that downtown commercial. Yes, but I, but if the fire chief was here, he'd say that um, he'd actually brought this up to me. The reason I bring it up is because he you know, we have the Analysis. There's a. I hate to say that you know, the population is getting older. There is a. There is a need for this. And didn't know uh, commercial is tough. If you talk to a lot of uh, uh, you know, guys who are developing, they're saying that it is hard to have a retail. What What we can do is continue that thought. I'm yeah. not saying the whole thing, but it's no, we can continue that thought when we go into the redevelopment plan. When the, if the determination need is is approved, adopted, ratified. Uh, not only by this board, but also the governing body, then that's absolutely a conversation for that redevelopment overlay. Um, page 35, number 18, addressed signage, uh, adding to the signage guidelines and strengthening the, the regulations. We added also, I believe it came up um, at the last meeting, that temporary sign language should be strengthened. So we will be providing additional language for temporary signage in the appendix as well. Um, and then towards the end of the recommendations, we added R3, um, oh, we recommend adding some additional regulations to the townhome R3 requirements. Um, what page are you on, Candace? That, 36? Yeah. That sounds great. Number 20. Number 20. Number 20. Yeah, number 20. Um, recommend that the review the standards and add specific guidelines related to the uh, distance between two buildings, guidelines for parking lot location as far as being set back a certain amount of distance from um, the yard, the front yard, side yard, uh, boxing. <coughs> And the number of units per that are permitted and the length of building would be there will be limitations added to those guidelines. And the recommend the specific recommendations would be an appendix. And then uh, following along that line, uh, limited access highway proximity district, we added to, to include in its entirety. Um, this parcel up here, which is Lot 155.05, Lot 1, and that would be done in an ordinance amendment. Um, the language <coughs> specifically states that it's 100 feet from the highways, and with the proper ordinance language, we add in that entire block and lot would be included within that district as well. Are we also looking to change that limited access where? residential areas, we 
don't think that matters? No, I really don't think that matters because if someone is successful, you know, in, in securing a approval for a billboard, which is permitted in that zone, it's, it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. But really what this did was clean up this landlocked parcel, which is uh, constrained completely uh, by uh, either highways or uh, environmental constraints. Uh, there was no possibility in R3 development, you need to count how reserve multifamily is ever going to be constructed there. Or do I believe any residential is going to be constructed there? So this permits for recreational uses, municipal uses, and also for uh, billboards. So we believe that's appropriate. And then number 22 is uh, changes to the zoning based on some land use that was realized wasn't in line with <coughs> the actual zone was. Um, so the first one is this area, lot 149, lot 4.01. It was zoned R2. Um, it's on along Kim Kimberly Drive, and it's a townhouse community. So we're recommending to rezone it um, to R3 to be more consistent with the existing land use. Is that little single cul-de-sac with the townhouse? It's already there. Yeah. Yes. So now, now, now this is consistent with the R. It was R2, which is 20,000 square foot lots. Didn't make sense, so now it's more consistent with what's currently there. Um, then there are lots 155.3, lot 2, lot, one, lot 170, lot 1, which is, oh, <laughs> which is this R3 area right here. Um, it's two parcels. They're both owned by the same person. There's currently a single family residential home on one lot, and the other one is, is vacant. Um, so we are recommending rezoning that to the R1 zoning district that it is currently, um, that pretty much surrounds it on this side. Um, so that would permit them to do anything that's still out of the R1. They can Correct. Buy, they can Correct. Yeah, so they would be, it would be more consistent with the neighbors if it was ever developed instead of having it be R3 townhouse. So is this, is this someone we should reach out to? Is they will be notified. But I mean, should we get in front of it a little bit? Is it something we should? To someone before we, it's only one person. Typically, or should we wait for the process or? The public hearing, but what we can do is we can work along with Clark to invite them to that public hearing. It's really not going to affect it, but both properties that we're talking about, both this pocket and there's three small uh, residential lots that actually just are one has one single family home on it. They're already single family residential. So the chances of those properties that are going to be molten down in the townhouses is very rare. The best I can glean from the history of our master plans, most likely that probably occurred when we were trying to comply with some affordable housing under the round one, where we tried to find additional opportunities in the town to do multifamily or higher density housing so we can have more affordable housing units. But with the Pressures in front of me have diminished. Your ground three obligation is zero. So I do not believe that you're going to have any pressures on the filters around here or anything else where we have to overzone for high density residential to accommodate affordable housing. Plus, the, and sorry I'm talking Kansas, I feel there wasn't going to And then the R3 zone that we do have in the pocket, the pocket here obviously is more than ample if it's ever developed. To be able to accommodate a good amount of uh, diverse housing units. And the current property owners of those two zones, those two properties that we're talking about, this would be a benefit for them to eliminate some barriers? I, I believe it eliminates a burden. A burden. A burden because they're under the R3 zone that is going to have all these other standards. So this this is consistent with what it should be with the adjacent properties, the R1. Yeah. We, and how it's currently being used. We did also look into this, these three parcels, as Steve mentioned, the they are block uh, seven lots three, three point zero one, and three point zero two. Also, all owned by the same person. It's a fairly new residential structure, single family unit. So it just makes sense to zone it R one, like everything else. Is. Okay. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, block fifty two lots one through four. They are owned by the borough uh, now, and the borough parking lot. 
So we just are cha recommend changing those from the C zoning district to the P zoning district. For public. For public. Um, so those were, yeah, those were the changes that had come out of the comments that had come out of the last meeting. Um, and uh, you will see there is a map that you can look at a little closer, but like Steve said, we will get you the, the recommended draft guidelines um, to put in the appendices for the next, for the hearing next month. But, so if everybody's comfortable with the direction we're at right now, could we Started at zero, I think we're at 95 right now percent. Uh, if everybody's comfortable with these recommendations, then we'll finalize the master plan provided to uh, uh, the clerk, we'll, which will forward everybody in about two weeks, and we'll do the advertisement for the public hearing in December. Okay. Sounds good. That's one. So, two is a very brief update on the redevelopment process. Uh, when I was here last month, we were at 75% of the parcels being evaluated and uh, reviewed back under the criteria that we discussed at length over the last couple of months. It was contained in our memorandum. We are 100% complete our uh, analysis on the criteria. Uh, we believe all of the study area will meet the criteria, and we'll have a report also in two weeks that will be forward for discussion. So we're going to have some homework in two weeks. So two weeks from now, you're going to get your just in time for Christmas. What's this? Just in time for Christmas. Or, or, or we can push it out. But I, I, I see that shaking your head right now. That, so, so what we're going to do next next month, and it won't be a very long process, and that's why we're trying to do a little bit each month instead of trying to do marathons. So everybody will have a copy of the determination we need, and I will walk everybody through that next month. Uh, that way, possibly, either we have a uh, uh, hearing in January or at the latest in February, which was our goal to have no later in February of next year of the determination of the need study to have the public hearing. And that's a public hearing, of course, that's a wonderful notice procedure, and we'll outline that in, a, in an email to you. So is it multiple? It's hearings? one of those multiples, you know, and all that wonderful stuff. So we'll get all that afterward. And Joyce, the answer is no, you cannot have the new planning board secretary. Take over on that. It happened in January. <laughs> no, the year in like Flynn. Choice might be staying home for another year. So, Steve. Yes. What might we, what might, might we be seeing in December? Do you know that for us? Well, we're, we're going to have the, pub, uh, the public hearing for the master plan, which is us just doing 15 minutes of a general overall discussion of the process and what's contained in the master plan in terms of recommendations, because the master plan will be on file with the clerk for any of the public to review and have any specific questions. So we don't have to go into every detail, but really present the process, what our findings are, recommendations in general, highlight them, and then ask for a public comment. That's really what we're looking for. And then, after the public comment, if the board is comfortable, they'll take a vote, and they will adopt the master plan and refer it back up to the governing body. So that's one process. Public hearings like that, typically, if it's uh, uh, non-controversial, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, that's typical. On the redevelopment um, uh, process, probably about, actually, it's only about 15 to 20 minutes because we already talked about the criteria so much of what we were looking at. It's really to give our report, which has <coughs> a lot of the required statutory analysis or really, we're going to pull out that spreadsheet that I was talking about. And if anybody has a question on a certain parcel, we'll be able to go right to that parcel. We'll have a big map that corresponds to the parcel. And you say, what are the criteria? Go down the chart, yes, no, yes, no. And it'll tell you why it meets the, the, uh, the requirement for a determination of the redevelopment. Of the possibilities per block and things of that nature? This is not this is not zoning at this point. This just says, that these parcels, in accordance with the, 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 the statute, meet the criteria for a redevelopment. So that's all it's saying, it's it meets the criteria. So we're not talking about what's going to go there, what kind of zoning or anything else. That's the next process. Okay. That's the process that's going to happen after we have our public hearing on the termination. And at this time, you said that area that we outlined, looks like all those properties will meet the minimum Yes, standards. yes. 
the redevelopment area. I'll telegraph you that because this is a report, but yes, our report will say that. Okay. You know, and, but I would like to have all the report and the backup data in order to talk about that more fully. So that way there's, there's no question that the appropriate analysis, you know, boots on the ground and going through and looking at all, not only the criteria about the statute, but also all the criteria that has come forth under case law in terms of meeting the standard that we have really done our job and done our research. Before the board. Just one more question on the master plan, the, the legal side of it. Obviously, the intent of the master plan allows us to allow the land use changes um, a little in an easier way, right? For the public hearings and stuff like that. Mr. Knight is always pointing out some glitches in our ordinances, land use ordinances, barrel ordinances that need to be tweaked. Is this the opportune time to fix some of those other ones, or, or some of them not as important, this, mostly just the land use issues? This is really the, the, the thousand foot view of the town in terms of land use. Um, any specific ordinances, and I've already changed zones or provide, if it's really just clean language, I would ask if you just come up with a list. I'm working on that. Yeah, if you come up with a list, I mean, that's what we do. You know, well, not, that's what Candace. So that we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, existing ordinances that we're, we have right now over the last uh, 18 years as we could assist. Copy and paste, paste. Yeah. We just had a situation. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the pod issue. Yeah, it just came up. You know, we didn't really identify pods in our our ordinance, and now we're running into properties that have pods, and they don't fit in anything that we can actually uh, restrict or, or regulate. And now we've got one that's been up for months. <laughs> And then at what point do we, you know, now we're kind of late to the party here trying to say, okay, we need to fix this. And that, that was something, just what that came up two days ago. Yes. You know, um, and we always have, Mr. Knight likes to remind me all the things that we haven't gotten fixed. No, but it is a full list. No, but it is a full list thing when we're doing the other ordinances. So those appendices I was talking about, there are going to be ordinances that are going to be prepared for governing body. If there's anything while we're already in the ordinance looking at things, we might be able to provide some assistance. But not necessarily part of the master plan, it's just part of this, no, this process. Master plan is one part of the process. Next, okay. The second step of the process is those implementing ordinances. We did some drafts, so it's more illustrative when you're looking at the master plan, but that's a process that has to be done a little bit more detail, make sure we're putting in, putting all, everything in the right sections, you know, all that wonderful stuff. Yes. Still have a question. Okay. Before we get into the uh, public portion of the master plan for the FR said we developed them, should we set rules as far as what the how long the public can speak? I'm, I'm going to defer to Mr. Carlin here. We have to set rules prior to the board. Or, can, but if you're going to do that, you're going to do it before, before the public portion of the meeting. So at the beginning of your meeting, as you get your presentation, you want to set some parameters, especially if you have a lot of people. Right. Right. You have a right to do that. Senior. You have a right to limit the speaker's time. So everyone has had an opportunity to be heard during the public session, then they meet up again. So they don't have to be somebody who dominates the meeting with several questions. Everybody gets an opportunity. Sure. A lot of boards will limit a five-minute uh, question and answer sure. beginning per person, and then that person can get up again after everybody has had an opportunity to speak. And also, Steve, I'm sorry. I was going to say, can you limit a person for how long they can speak for? I mean, can a person keep coming up, coming up? Coming well, a lot up? of boards also then would say that we'll conclude the meeting at 10 o'clock. If it's not finished, we will convene our next meeting. So you put a cap on the meeting, but then also a how long the person can speak uh, until everyone has had an opportunity to speak at that person. Now that, that is something that can be done absolutely. I would suggest on the determination of need to err on the side of caution because Many redevelopment areas have been challenged, and it's always on the determination of need. So, if you can give everybody ample time to discuss at nausea any of their questions or concern, it's probably more conservative that you're, you're fending off any challenges. I had a question that uh, when we're noticing the people in the redevelopment zone. Is there a boilerplate notice that we have to send out? I'm just, I'm just concerned that I don't want to alarm some of these people that we're going to be doing condemnation or eminent domain. Is there something that we can put into that notification that in no way, shape, or form is this going to be part of what we're trying to do? I don't want to have 
a room full of upset senior citizens scared that we're trying to throw them out of their house or something. No, That's no. not what we're trying to do at all. When it was referred over by council, mayor and council, it was a non-condemnation. Right. Referral. But can that be in our notice then? Absolutely. I just don't, I don't want anybody Absolutely. to be upset and, and, and think they have to come here and be stressed out. No, because if they want to keep their home, they're keeping their home, and that's not a question. No, I, I would like to work with I want them to know that. I notice that not only this board is comfortable with, and yeah. your professionals, but also mayor. And I don't want to create anxiety. I just want to have to be... Something that could be appropriate, not only... Appropriate. The mail to everybody, but also be on the website, so people are checking yeah. what's going on. And, and even uh, for consideration of mayor and council, is their intention, if it is successful, that they're not going to be changing underlying zoning or anything else like that. So well, that's the question I, I have to ask. What we're doing, I mean, everything we're doing could come to nothing. Right, right. That's, right. that's why I'm a little concerned why people think, you know, the, the, even this, this idea you're saying people might challenge the, the uh, classification of uh, this redevelopment. redevelopment area. But because the challenge it for what purpose? Nick, it's whispered. It's, it's whispered. No, 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 that's not my point. I want to know what would be the challenge. I can't speak to a hypothetical. No, no, but what I'm getting at is we, we've known a determination that this area is in need of redevelopment. A person shows up to say, I challenge that my property is in the need of redevelopment. What would be the purpose of challenging that? They're just coming out of here. Because there's, no, there's nothing that, there's no second half. They don't know. That's my point. That's the only reason I question that. It's, it's the whole whisper down the lane thing, I think, that. This one here from this one that they're doing this. But thing. I'm curious sure what the challenge would be, though. Like if I own a property, property that you're facing, you know, you know, okay, so that's that's our argument. Kind of the devaluation, right. I think. Right. So, yeah. really not doing. right. So the overlay is what people might say. I don't want to be part of this overlay. Why are you saying I need to be developed? Right. Well, and the, the overlay. Well, one of the reasons for that we're going to be recommending an overlay, so everybody's underlying zoning, unless unless they through private real estate transfers, nothing to do with the borough of condemnation, which is providing the opportunity of this overlay zoning for It's the opportunity to return. increase the value of it's, all the properties. Yeah, it's only opportunity. And I will tell you that a lot of times when we have people coming out of determination need or the redevelopment plan stage, it's because what they've read in the papers or right. other projects in other towns, but they read, you know, what happened in Collingswood, very specifically what happened in Haddon Township, and that that long divisive fight where combination was implemented and such. So they look at those things, you know. Candy's point about the letter, but you just said in that few <clears throat> sentences that this is an opportunity for them to uh, you know, possibly sell their property. Can we make, I think that's what she's saying, can we say something that effect that all we're doing is giving the property owner the opportunity, um, not the municipality. We're not going to be the developer in any situation. We, we want to, in our notice, it's going to follow more of the criteria of what it is. And then what can be done is have the notice posted on, on the website, you know, where the governing body wants to do a separate mailing for their own reason. But the notice really has to provide you know, the, the legal criteria for the public notice. So we want to, we don't want to make it a Okay, so the legal side of the to? A position piece. Okay. Yeah. So, Obviously, you can't do a position piece, but we we can just put non condemnation, no taking of property. Those things would be definitely put in the notice because that's already provided for it in the statute in terms of actions that are permitted or not permitted. I don't think it's too much to do a, a notice piece for these people. I, I really don't. I think I think they're I think they're concerned, and unfortunately, they're not here at any of these meetings. They don't come out. A lot of the seniors just don't come out in the evening. And I, you know, I just feel bad for people that are going to have anxiety about this whole thing and fill the room but for no reason. Let's remember, these are the people that are surrounding the area. And for years, everybody's complaining, what can we do about it? Right. Are they going to do something? Well, here it is. Oh, I, I, no, I agree. And and put that at the bottom of the letter. If you don't like this, you won't do anything. <laughs> How's that? Right. So what we'll the public notice? I'm a little public, jaded, I'm sorry. The public notice is sent to certify <laughs> Certify, get that the chain and everything else. So that's why you want to do that clean. And then you can do a regular mailing for the same property owners. Right. If we're out to certify the list, you know, if you want to put a position piece out from the town, which doesn't have to do a certified, it's just a regular mailing. 
Have you, you guys seen that before? Is that the yeah. positive? We yeah. have a newsletter or on the website. Yeah. You can put your philosophy of what you're trying to okay. accomplish. That might be good to tie that together. I think you should go right to, right to those property owners. Why don't we have to bail out the whole well, town? It's going to be a lot of mail. So if you look at, look at the parcels, the, the, the certified list from the clerk is going to be exhausted. So if you're prepared. Is it 300? What was the number? Uh, yeah, it, I think it was a little over 300. And we'll be helping you with the mail, <laughs> but not the certified list. So we'll, we'll assist with that process. Certified list, no problem. Okay. Oh, is that easier now? Uh, from yeah. the county provider. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's where you're at with everything, and we'll see everybody next month unless there's any questions. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's like 320 something parcels. So it's a good amount. Yeah. A lot of them are, a bunch of them are owned by the same, same people. people. How do you notice those when you have, is it one notice for each parcel? Is it a notice for the, if, you know, like you say, someone has four well, blocks. It depends on how it's on the tax records. Yeah. 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 So if the tax records is primary lot and additional lots on the one tax record, one notice. One note, okay. If it is multiple individual tax records, it's multiple individual notices. Hi, thank you both. Oh, they can't no, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter whatsoever, please come up to the microphone and state your name and address. Seeing as no one from the public is wishing to speak, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Mr. Chowski? Second. Second by Mrs. Cushion. All in favor? Aye. Are there anything else anyone wants to discuss while we're here? Nice to see Mr. Oromir. I uh, wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving and best to your family. And with that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, Mr. Stone, everybody. Mr. Opley, all in favor? Aye.